Kinda loud, but I take it all home like a metronome. When I clutch my headphones to my head, I let it go while my brain on red. I bleed it out, I eat it now. I know what's up, I'm trying to see the sounds. I don't wanna fight it no more. I feel a slight echo coming out of my brain like a gecko. The way I run through the rhythms, the train moving like I hear a uh, inside of me, beat, beat it out of me. I can't get a lot of me, they feel like some out of me. There's a lot of me, I'm inside of me, I'm to the heart of me. Innocent, grew to give a crack smile Cold send a kid with TLC, I act wild One day I hope all this trauma makes sense And I just hope it makes sense, man Give a penny for my thoughts Quarter pound, quarter, uh Uh, yeah I ain't good at freestyling, but fuck it, I'ma keep going Keep going, South Central LA A Merck Park, Gardena Carson Uh, yeah Hey, and we back, everybody know my heart sent From the heavens, back again, rapping For all my niggas that can't fuck the bottom shining We got them rolling, I'm about to stop for a second Pause, take a breath, you know I'm about to mic Pause, pause, stop for a minute Pause for a minute, say, pause for a minute, say, pause for a minute uh, uh, And the show by the stars, so gather your friends, you know it's about to get done Welcome to Vine Tree Radio, it's your boy Wes here chilling with Mowdy Wowie, how's it going? I don't know, we got a guest, introduce yourself What's happening? It's Chris Sidus, aka Loverboy James, aka Bushwick Billy, aka, uh, aka Chris Justice, aka, oh, what's the other alias? I got a lot of aliases, man, but just know I'm Chris Sidus Let's go I'm a model, rapper Spoken word artist, author of two books. A third book is coming out March. I do a whole lot of shit. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that was a great introduction for yourself, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so at first, usually in the pod, we get into a little bit of background, you know, about like our meeting and like you know and how we know each other and like who you are and whatnot. Uh-huh. So I mean, also I feel like you have somewhat background of us too i feel like that's a cool fact a lot of times people have came here and they don't really know us so it's like that part is a part of the pod too like introducing what we do and like our background a lot too but with you we have done some cool things we've worked together musically yeah shot video i mean we've touched into it but we kind of spent a lot of time doing it and i feel like you got to know our style and the things we we do and whatnot but right now we get to dive into you know to sit you into and like i guess how we met and everything i think that's a big how we met is a big part of i guess what you do yeah dog like, well can i can i yeah, yeah well <laughs> well yeah the song is out uh complicated yeah go go stream that shit on on spotify and all your ds dsps um yeah we we met in monterey well we didn't like meet me meet. like <laughs> how i got to like figure out even who you were like how i seen you like i seen you in my like my you know in the class so um we both went to school at csu monterey bay that's like five and a half six hours away from los angeles up north two hours south of san jose and so um since i was in the area performing i had like a few performances like scheduled in terms of spoken word um a old professor of mine was like hey you want to come in like perform for my class and I said for sure so went there performed and little did I know Wes was there and then I'm like 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 he hit me up and yeah and that yeah, was shit just much, happened like, that's so pretty much like, how yeah. we ended the meeting from yeah, there yeah yeah, I, yeah yeah but he was doing his thing within that and that's the stuff I kind of have a lot of questions like how do you even get to that point you know what I mean I feel like I had questions of that in that moment where yeah. I was like kind of just like 
in school and I didn't know really how this was going to translate to music at least for me because I knew I wanted to do music yeah and I was like music is kind of what I always wanted to do but I was like I don't know how I'm going to get from this to this but I know it relates because I'm like in communications I'm doing Mm -hmm. shit that has to do with like you know my expression so I'm like all right, I feel it and but then that moment was kind of something for me where I was like this is somebody that like definitely knows has figured that part out at least to some degree because he was an, like rap doing spoken word and yeah. you was like graduated from the school so you took that and whatever you did you wasn't doing like something else with it you were doing like music and art with it and I was like okay so that's what made you want to reach out and be like what's good like I'm trying to you know collaborate or something yeah man I mean like that's that's the one thing that like I kind of appreciate about college like how um like the environment like it teaches you a lot about yourself like just through the interactions with different people i got like add all that into the music into the experiences and whatnot um if i wasn't in college like i really wouldn't have like so much shit to say because i got into so much bullshit <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like got getting into it with police having like death threats and shit like that uh getting into it with the president of the school calling his ass out during graduation <laughs> like fuck you like, so like um yeah like i wasn't even too sure like how i was gonna pursue music like my freshman year like i just went into the shit but then again all those experiences like kind of just it just all just came together and you just gotta trust the process so um and that's one of the main things me and my music mentor shout out to dj chuck the old solo hfp um you gotta live life if you don't live life you ain't gonna have shit to talk about yeah you know and these stories these memories are like all we really have so yeah i feel that for sure i feel like me and Mauricio have talked about that a couple of times on the pod about like taking time to have experiences to even like be able to make music and shit like that because i feel like uh we were kind of just talking about that when you were asking like what we've been on because we haven't seen each other in a while since we last like did the music video for complicated that's about come out by the way (laughs) yeah but (laughs) go 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 check that out man yo when when i saw the music video i was like Damn, I was like way bigger. Like, right, bro. I'm, I was about to say, like, you, you, I saw the you weight, show bro. off some weight. Looking man, great, man. Like, like, it's, sick, like when bro. you first came in, I was like, wait, is that the same, like, Chris? I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, I lost 137 pounds. Damn, that's gone. Yeah, bro. I was I was 330 when we shot that video, and um, now I'm 193. That's tough. Yeah. And I started that journey uh last April. So it hasn't even been a full year. Wow. So yeah. That's awesome. Damn, bro. That is ill, bro. That is crazy. I, I didn't even think about that time, but I feel like like you said, everything's changed since then and I feel like that's a big fact for us too. Like within that time, I think like I was saying, it was a lot of the experiences for us to get to even being able to make music it was like a no point but not a real no point because Mm. i feel like that's necessary to the process like if you get what i'm saying 100 percent. i feel like for me when i was thinking about it it to me it sent like is this right i don't know if it can you hear me yeah okay um sorry when i was thinking about it i was like it's true in both cases because i think you need experiences to like you gotta talk closer to I think you need like experiences to be able to have something to story tell on but I think also like those experiences in their own way lead to the ability to tell that story mm-hmm. like in a different route like not only does it give you like in a sense content but it also gives you like an ability to connect with others and be able to bring that story to life you know what I mean? Like, a lot of, like, experiences and being able to go out into the world is your way of, like, meeting people and meeting other people to, like, help you bring your vision to life. And, like, mm-hmm. in that sense, like, if you don't go out and experience, like, you might not get the content and you might not get the opportunity to, like, even put it out there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think it's, like, one of those things where, like, I don't know, maybe it's, like, um, what's that word? Not, not like, uh, self-prophesizing or, like, um... 
manifesting it kind of in a sense where like you're both making the content and you're both like putting it out i don't know oh okay i know that like it's the com- we talked about this before in some other pods but i was kind of pondering it a little bit after the art imitates life thing mm-hmm. but also on top of that like how do i say like what you speak sometimes comes to reality most of the time with this music shit this art shit and that's that never-ending cycle that you kind of don't really get out of that like it's the same thing Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying no that's real look at tupac's story like man you know it's crazy um so yeah we shot that video june 2020 months later in september i was in the hospital with covid and so um, I was listening to Me Against the World all the time because that's what I that's what I felt like. And I remember you, you be, telling us that, that story, bro, like being about making it through COVID and like really hitting you. Like I was like, damn, bro, like that's crazy. Dude. Yeah, like I was legit on my deathbed. Like, and there was a moment where I was gone, and like I just saw pink, white, and blue lights, and um, and then next thing I know, I just wake up to a raw shot to the neck because it was about to drill a hole in my neck. So, um, but being careful what energies you put out there, what you're consuming. And like, that's one of the like things that me and my old friends used to talk about a lot uh, in terms of, yeah, this music shit. Um, and especially in this case, as I just mentioned, like Tupac, profound lyricist, really like a goat. But, however, a lot of the things that he was speaking of uh, in terms of, like, death and, like, saying, like, will I die tonight? There's a song called, he has a song called If I Die Tonight. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I definitely have a song called The Day I Died. <laughs> yeah, see, like, we, we got to, as artists, we got to be careful of that shit. Not mean. only for ourselves, but, like, for the listeners, too, because, yeah. like, um, it, like, before I got COVID, the reason why I brought up COVID, the um, before I caught COVID, I was yeah, I was listening to two specific songs on that album all the time. If I Die Tonight and Death Around the Corner, Whoa. all day every day. That's all I played. I didn't play anything else. And then next thing I know, I got exposed and like I'm coughing up blood and shit. So like, yeah, we got to be careful of what we consume and what we put out there, exactly. and you know what we believe to be true. Um, yeah, it's sometimes. Shifting the mindset um, is important. Like I used to have a whole like pessimistic mindset and worldview of different things, um, but just getting out of that, I'm more happy about life. Like life is fucking amazing. God is great. God is good all the time. Out so, of curiosity, what kind of helped you transition from that pessimistic view to like a more optimistic view? Um. Honestly, just going through that near death experience, and because uh, as soon as I got out of the hospital, uh, I got released with a uh, oxygen tank, so like I really couldn't go anywhere, and uh, I went to Bible study on like Zoom, so like reading the Word of God, uh, consuming different things that that could feed my spirit in a more positive light, that help me transition my mindset into something more and not being afraid of the bigger picture of things you know what i'm saying like or get so overwhelmed about the bigger picture um and also what's what was wild too like people i never met before in my life like taking like a uber or something would be like yo i just feel like i need to say this but you're divinely guided and that used that tripped me out like that happened like a few times after i got out the hospital and just again following god's word like if god told me to like not be around somebody which has happened quite a few times since then like i cut them off and then things would just go it would just run you know what i'm saying and just keeping the faith that you know everything's gonna turn out the way it's supposed to so that's kind of how my mindset's been like shifting i'm curious to know how that has affected uh your album because that you've been said you're working on because i remember we talked about that a little Mm -hmm. how 
in your us, our talks of you know catching up on the time that we hadn't seen each other that at the last time you showed us an album you're working on and since you had such a transformative uh experience in your life like i wonder how has that played into the music itself you want to create like um so for this album uh it's all about trauma and like in in this case how how i would describe this album in six words science fiction album written by god that's that's how i can explain it um like there's as i said earlier like even like like at the very beginning of the pod when i was like talking about these different aliases and whatnot those are you know those are different sides of of myself and um in in the album i kind of talk about how those different sides play a role in the trauma Mm -hmm. so for example lover boy james i'm talking about the different traumas that I had with like in the love world, you know, relationships, romantic relationships, surviving uh, sexual assault twice when I was homeless um, and how that plays a role into me expressing my feelings towards someone that I find attractive or interested in. Um, and then there's the other side of me, like Chris Justice. He's more like political and sometimes he gets a little scared about like talking about a lot of things or being loud because like we know how that plays out in this world like Mm -hmm. a lot of our leaders young leaders getting killed like ferguson is a you know an example of that even recently with the riots that popped off or the up i should say uprising the uprisings that popped off in june 2020 um and i experienced some shit with like Monterey police and and shit like that and people tokenizing and fetishizing me and so it's like damn do I really want to keep doing this so yeah I just kind of felt that it was really necessary especially in this day and age where like the the conversation around mental health is at like an all time high like it's being Mm -hmm. more but I think what the issue that I kind of see nowadays is like in the black community, we need to talk about this shit a lot more because um, things are getting tougher. It's, yeah. it's getting tough. Like, um, so I wanted to put everything in an album where like not not being afraid of like, yeah, about talking about sexual assault, talking about colorism, talking about feeling like you're not supposed to be here, but you're meant to be here. And, you know, these are things that I really feel that could change lives and help save lives. Would you say that um, doing spoken word or poetry, like expressing those things through that helped you be able to do that through music? Or was that something you always was doing in music and everything you did, like talking about those types of things? Well, spoken word came first. Like that that was that we like that was like a vessel for you to get to do it in music. Like it was more natural for you to do it through that medium. Yeah, yeah, because like, I started Spoken Word December 2009, uh, started writing, and then rapping came in uh, February 2018, and I was with a music group at the time, uh, we're no longer together, but I still take those those skills um, that I learned within the group and apply it to my own way of being, of, you know, putting things together, but like, it definitely wasn't no like easy road to like of course expressing yourself like that that's like a huge that that that's a part of you you know yeah. and like when i first got started with spoken word i got laughed at i got laughed at at people in my high school like nigga why are you talking about this like but um shit i even tried out for hbo's uh brave new voices they didn't like me because of how i perform there's like a super iconic famous LA poet I'm not gonna say his name (laughs) but like he didn't like my shit but then like I just stuck with my style and my style got me to different places to where I'm getting paid and people are interested in bringing me out and it's just all about really believing in yourself and your craft and what you know what your uniqueness your story what you could bring to the table and everybody has something to bring to the table because every story is not the same. Everybody has different perspectives on how they view life. 
and I think that's very important to put out there because a lot of folks just kind of view the world like everything has to be the same no like that's the beauty of life everything is not the same 1000 bro I feel like Mauricio definitely me and Mauricio definitely kind of founded our group on that notion like it was kind of like us kind of seeing that in each other like that part like that there's almost like your lane can don't gotta be things aren't singular and we realize i think that was like the breaking point for us at least just in making songs that we're like we don't have to be one thing and then it made it sense like the point is maybe drive to be the opposite of one thing be mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying as versatile as you could possibly be as do uh, as dual as you could be because everything is that is good and bad you know what i'm saying it's not one-sided it's like and i feel you that's kind of you know you can get on it explain what you want to talk oh that's pretty spot on and i think you can you nailed it it's it's a lot of that seeing that everything just kind of has like a lot of variables there's a lot of ways to like see things and the fact that we see things so differently in certain aspects like we might have like certain things that many things that we we see we agree on very well but there's a lot of things that we see differently and those things are like it's perspective based exactly you know what i'm saying like it's like i always talked about that you like certain perspective i always felt like my perspective was valuable at a point in time like i was like wait like what you're saying like seeing the certain shit you see like you know what i'm saying like it kind of makes your perspective to them be like oh wait i've seen too much shit at this point that it's like everybody it's everybody's shake at putting this shit into the world however they put it into the world and that's really how you make your mark because it's unique everyone's perspective is unique and that's what people don't be like willing to be themselves and shit mm-hmm. and that's where they like golden moments be and whatever the fuck it is and i think that that part is kind of sometimes it just doesn't line up with everybody's thing but you you kind of do it the best you know what I'm saying Cause it's like And I don't know I feel like that's just something that I've always noticed That like Certain perspectives are really valuable Because we don't have like Much of them You know what I'm saying Or much Cause it's unique Everybody's shit is One of one for the most part So it's like The way I'm viewing The world And the way I'm interpreting All this shit If I express it People sometimes are like Oh shit There's someone that looks at this In this way Like I kinda see shit that way Like So that's <laughs> the base of it all You know yeah and like honestly like with the activism that i did up north in in monterey like i wanted to take those lessons that i learned in regards to like being involved with women's rights as an ally and taking it back home and like telling the homies like yo this is what i learned and like maybe we could change los angeles forever and that's still uh a thing that i want to do because everything is based around hyper masculinity and like oh yeah i got the biggest this biggest that like like nigga you ain't shit like i'm a like you know what i'm saying so we always try to one up each other and being aggressive but then like sharing these stories about things that happen to us can provide more compassion and more understanding with uh, with each other as a community and so um yeah and then with that I just had to look within myself too and understand all like the stupid shit that I'd done like uh, shit in middle school calling a girl out of her name and shit like that um, and a whole bunch of different things that I used to do and like unknowingly still do that contributes to like the systems of oppression and, and stuff like that um, I think yeah and just taking those perspectives and like having these conversations these dialogues and that actually led to me even like teaching in the prison system for a couple of years well, uh as how so was that? that was interesting because like the people that i was like workshopping with to deconstruct like patriarchy these the the system of oppression uh a lot of them was in there for domestic violence mm. and um like there was conversations dialogue on how to like treat a woman how to so uh, in like short term she was active in there like it was some motherfuckers in there that you were trying to really explain this to that have like hit women and yeah i bet there was probably like 
what the fuck are you saying? Like, you really had to, like... But then, see... Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Like, that's going to the belly of the beast, though. Like, by doing that, I respect you for, like, being able to kind of, like, approach it in that regard. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like to take it to that... I don't need, You know what I'm saying? To take it to that instance, it's almost like... I feel like it's a deeper thing to you. Yeah. And, like, being able to, like, speak to that in people is, like, some shit. Yeah, I mean, like, because, see, here's the thing, like, and this is no in no way, shape, or form, like, trying to excuse, like, behavior or anything like that. Yeah. It's just that, but like. But someone has to do the work. You know what I'm saying? Y- y- yeah. Or try to. Or else, or, like, it's not like the prison system is doing the work. You know what I'm saying? Y- yeah, because, like, here's the thing, like, where we come from, we don't have access or education to a lot of things that needs to be talked about, like, mm-hmm. like feminism, mm-hmm. um, or women's rights, the history of women's rights in the U.S., mm-hmm. um, cause, like, for example, like, N.W.A., like, you know, ton of misogynistic <laughs> lyrics, <laughs> ton of, like, wild shit, but then, like, they're only a product of their environment. They they're talking about like the dope man being across the street and shit. Yeah. Shit that was crack. really out, like reality of what was going on. Yeah, and like <laughs> it, it's like yeah, they're they're just mimicking everything that's around them. Like mm-hmm. they don't have like the education of like this isn't cool. I shouldn't do this. Yeah. But like this this is what it is. So. Uh, a lot of kids like in the hood are yeah are mimicking these different things and like then this is where conversations and dialogues and like higher education needs to come into play not to say that like oh yeah you have to go to college to get this kind of education but we do need better access to it college admittedly like I'm, I'm pro college. Just, just want to get that out there. I think everybody should go to college, not only for the education, but for different experiences. But we have to admit, college isn't for everyone. I have homies that said, like, yo, like, I went to college for a year. It's just not for me. And gotta respect that. Like, you know yourself better than anyone else, and you can't let anybody tell you who you, who you are. Hmm. If you feel like that's not for you, that's not for you. Yeah, that's true. But I also understand the aspect of what you're saying. I don't know if you've ever taken any kind of, like, classes, like, having to do with, like, gender or patriarchy. But I, I did when I was, like, in school. And I had to take, like, a cool, decent amount over there because it had, like, an interesting, like, curriculum where, like, it kind of had a lot of cool shit like that. And I feel like that shit did in some way, like, kind of say, like, shift at least the way I thought about certain shit, definitely. Like, you know, it was certain shit that I was definitely, like... I wouldn't say, like, they're more, like, woke out there. Like, I feel like I'll be a weird way to say it. But the way that, like, the access to it and, the, it, like, your able ability to experience more people talking about shit like that is more common. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it was just kind of, like, it made me think about it a bit more, like, in that way where I was just like, okay, like, it's just more reality. The same way. I like, guess a flip. You feel me? Yeah. Like, like, people talk about what is reality. Like, when something becomes a reality for you, you just kind of, like, adopt it into what it is. You know what I mean? And that, in those classes and shit like that, it kind of became, like, somewhat of a reality where I was, like, the other people I'm dealing with, people I'm meeting, they understand these things. And they want me to understand these things. You feel me? So it became more, like, real to me, I guess. Yeah. For me personally, I feel like I haven't had... I didn't... You asked if I had taken any classes. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't taken any, like, specific courses that are, like geared towards like women's studies um i've taken like others like society type courses but nothing geared at like coc that. i had to take like a gender studies class too like one it was, it was interesting that was like the first it was like the baby of the real ones you feel me it was a community college but what i was gonna say is that while i didn't have like that level of like formal education with it i did have like a level of like informal education with it in the sense of like growing up with like my mom and like my sister and not only that but like other family members and friends that were females that were like kind of giving their perspective because you know we talk about it's the realities of what they they face and hearing their struggles through them it's kind of hearing that first hand account of like okay this is what's messed up in what how we kind of oversee things like and it took you know a t- it's a process of learning it and also like you say now it's a matter of making it more accessible and I think part of it also 
is I think it is becoming more accessible. And I think it's a good thing because not only through them, but also through like other cultural ways, whether like it be this. like shows, this, you know, podcast. Like, like what he was just talking about, like going to other people and talking about the shit with the homies and being like, Exposing people to the conversations more, having the conversations exp- exactly I mean? being exposed to it, and I feel like I would like, like I've always loved like, like a, I love like stand up comedy, and I listen to like a whole array of like different comics, but a lot of them are like female comics, and a lot of what they talk about is the female struggle, and so like I feel like that kind of gives like, and with comedy, I feel like comedy is like a medium that allows people to kind of push barriers and be a little bit more vocal and honest about certain situations that they don't have the opportunity to be in a lot of other situations where they have to be present like a more of like a formal tone or a professional tone like it kind of gives like that raw appeal and so I've been thankful for that and I feel like mediums like that are ways that can be kind of like pushed forward to the light more to kind of give that accessibility to others like so that they they don't have the opportunity to attend like a college course for like a women's studies class, but being able to just be exposed to more just female driven content that gives like a reality outlook on that. I feel like will in turn kind of teach people the same way, like they get, you know, influenced by other kind of shows and media and things like that. True. But however, I also think that like, like it's going to take something to where, um, people got to internalize it and like analyze it to where like That's they can true. see where it can affect them on on mm-hmm. a interpersonal level. That's true. For me, like when I got into the shit, like um, I was in the mending monologues. It was the first year it came to CSU and B, uh, CSU and B, and um, I learned about yeah hyper masculinity and just being from LA and the gang culture and shit, that's, that was my entry point because I had uh, a brother that that was a pyro. He he died recently. Um, and like family, other family members that was like gang members and shit. So uh, just seeing their behavior, even as like a young kid, I never wanted to like mimic that behavior. So um, like, just taking those lessons and then seeing how that affects women and how like uh i unknowingly learned some of their behaviors and i gotta unlearn all that that was my entry point to understanding to, to like okay i do need to make a change this shit is real people are getting hurt people are dying women are dying black trans women are dying like these these are you know yeah things that need to be talked about so you saying you were saying that you um have like uh an organization of sorts or, or something that or was it that you were saying that you were doing something I'm trying to think of the exact wording for it but you were mentioning earlier that you were wanting to bring like this movement with you yeah right yeah and so like what's like the what is your way of like wanting to kind of like push the movement forward so this idea that I have for like several years, it's just executing it and getting it off the ground because, uh, you know, life happens. And, you know, I'm trying to get myself breathing space and room to humanize myself because like when you're in the activism space, it's so difficult uh, to feel human. That's something that they don't tell you. Like, they don't tell you, like, yeah, you got to, like, take care of yourself. This work will literally kill you. And when I first got into it, uh, I was not taking care of myself. I was walking out of the crib with, like, holes in my pants, uh, shirts, like, not showering every day, like, just mad depressed and, like, People would go and talk to my friends and being like, what's wrong with Chris? Rather than approaching me head on and asking, yo, how can I support you? How can I do this? So, um, yeah, that that was basically my life this like past decade. So like right now, that's why I've been like focusing on music and messages in the music. Uh, but in terms of like activism, getting my hands dirty in the plans of like bringing this movement to Los Angeles where we could talk to uh, young black men, young black women, uh, young black members of the LGBTQ plus community. 
um, I went to bring Mending to uh, Los Angeles and do a tour in South Central to different places like Washington High School, Locke High School, Dorsey, maybe. Hey, my like, dad went to Washington High School. Yeah, like, see, like, uh, in these areas where, like, you know, we could give uh, people that look like us, like, access to education access to these different stories that need to be heard because once they hear these stories they might look back and be like yo shit no that right like, there bro that that yeah. right there is, is what it is because like say like kid cuddy's my favorite artist but because like i saw something in him at the time that like i wasn't seeing where i was at like and i lived in lancaster at the time i was like sixth and seventh grade and i guess that wasn't maybe what was like cool but i saw it transcend in a way to like like you said like i had a friend that was involved in stuff i just met him at the time i'm a little kid but it was my homie and he like listened to kid cuddy and then it was weird for me because i I did too and it was one of them things that just being like damn this is my favorite artist right now Mm -hmm. because it's just like that factor you know what i'm saying of being kind of like seeing somebody that is from your backgrounds to some degree or whatever degree but is also themselves and into some shit that everybody else there isn't really into yeah it's kind of like being seen you know yeah like yo me and the homie was just talking about that in in monterey the last time i was up north like about being in the anime because like like people like to be like man you in the anime you weird and it's just like nigga these stories are dope like and like the fucking art style of it the the stories like what what reality tv show what movie has the the creative power that an anime an anime like show has that could curate tell me like like they be talking about aliens and like time travel and putting it all together like and wrapping fiction. up in a That's fucking like science fiction to the fucking like extreme they're like bro i'm making whole worlds times worlds times worlds nigga like think about like that was the old like the most original of like when it comes to like animation and like cartoons and like anything along those style of like the drawings comic strips and all that like it was all to to reach that point to reach the parts where we couldn't reach in like a sense of like reality of like capturing in a certain sense we're like no this is where we have the ability to push these boundaries so like even if you watch like old animes or old cartoons and old or old comic books like they were so ahead of their time in a certain sense where they're talking about stuff that like now where we're like j- like they don't have physical boundaries th- think about all the like the movies like even like the great like so many of the greatest films that are out nowadays are based off of like comics or like based off of like um like drawings rendered prior to like let them be like oh this inspired me to be able to push this like this like they're just trying to barely get to like the level of like the man imaginativity that like the anime was able to provide mm-hmm. because now like the technology is allowing to like kind of catch up to it in a certain sense but like you're saying like other than that there's still, even still then though there's an anime in a sense has a way to to push boundaries that no that very few other mediums can which is dope super dope Let's see yeah. I wish I watched more anime. I've only have a couple of animes that I've ever watched like that. Dog, we we was talking about this earlier. You gotta watch Samurai Champloo. That that's like that's like the holy grail of anime. Like to to me, I know like some folks gonna be like, no, you gotta I watch. Got an- oh. I got another one for real. Hey. <laughs> Like I know some folks out there that's gonna be like, you know, you you gotta watch uh, Berserk, you gotta watch Dragon Ball Z. I mean, Dragon Ball Z is, is a classic. I heard Berserk is a uh, cult classic. Uh, yeah, watch those. Uh, Tenchi Muyo, gotta watch that. Gundam, gotta watch that. Uh, even Sailor Moon is hard. Like yeah, I've seen some Sailor Moon when I was young. I used to watch that. Sa- Sailor Moon is hard. Uh, I saw some. Yo, shout out to the homie AJ. This motherfucker in Monterey. 
he he showed me this crazy ass anime called uh the future diary watch that shit i'm not gonna say nothing about it but that that is a mind fuck the future diary i've heard of that one with the book too death note or some shit or death yeah. note yeah death note is a classic yeah death note is a classic um i i actually had a tough time um getting into it myself but like i'm but you know like it's like it's, it's, it's like a, a a rap artist everybody's like holding as the goat Man. and then you just have no choice but to say like you know what this person's the goat because they did x y and z they achieved this I so it, it's just like i gotta give it respect that's interesting that's a really that's a really interesting topic now, that is conversation true. Piece, there's another like the homie that's uh you know over there the homie fucking uh, I don't think this one never like Flatbush. You know, we're like diehard Flatbush fans. But you always like respected them on some like G shit. But that's one of those instances where some people you just be like, nah, I respect them, but like I just didn't bump them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just didn't watch that shit. Like, it was like I knew it was the GOAT am- anime, but it wasn't my jam. Like, <laughs> like man, I know some rap fans out there gonna, gonna be mad as fuck at me. I love them. I, he he has a few classics and I ain't gonna lie but the whole catalog I don't know damn I don't even know if I should even say this shit you, I don't know I don't know who you're I don't, I'm, I'm no, thinking, no, I, I'm no. like trying to think in my head I'm like I got one person it better person. not be like Kendrick or somebody like that. Hell fucking no, Kendrick. Like, you said like the whole catalog or something. No. That's what made me think like somebody with a lot of like. <laughs> I don't know who you said. No, because no, I'm I'm trying I'm trying not to say it because oh, I, mean, I, I don't know, know if I if I'm gonna I get in who, trouble for this shit. I know shit. what you said. I know you said. That's not who it is though. <laughs> but yeah, there there there's someone out there that's yeah, that man, that's like no, on the Mount curious. Rushmore <laughs> of rap, and I'm like, oh. Uh, I know it is. I, I don't. I, uh, there's one that like okay. A lot of people have. Remember, a, I was gonna say. A lot of people have said that, but yeah. the easy way to say it is that yeah, is that it's it's within that three. And yeah, I, and it's not one or two. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know which one it is, <laughs> but but and I'll say a lot of people say that though. So that's not that crazy. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people that like have like made. How do you say like like not jokes, but like have kind of like. Slept on that person like all the way out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, what I mean? like, just be like all the way out. Like I was good on them from day one. Like, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so I I feel like shit. And sometimes when it's like that, I think sometimes being a niche isn't really bad. Like you know, like I feel like that Are just that who we're talking. About? No, no, being a niche. I'm saying like okay. being in like a like just a, like in the lane like a lane. And that's where I feel like it's a dual sort of like. That sometimes can get people to just be like, nah, I'm not into this. But they can also propel them to be that far up because their lane is so much so, my bad. Their lane, <laughs> you know? You know who's a good example of that? Tyler, the creator. Because when he first started off, like, not a lot of people like him because of his style. But then, it was like, a little he, polarizing. Like. But that motherfucker catapulted like a exactly. Man. Ever since Flower Boy and then Igor won a Grammy and then Call Me If You Get Lost, I think that's gonna run, win a Grammy. Cause, but like oh. him, yeah. like definitely that is yeah. one of those cases. Cause I was always there for it, but I definitely saw the same thing where it was like there was definitely a big amount of people that I knew fucked with music and listened to music, but that would just not be bumping Tyler. Like you know what I mean? Like when I bump that, they'll be like, "What you, what you throwing this one for?" Like you know what I mean? While he was getting really big. Even people, Where it was like what? <laughs> even people felt like that about Kendrick with "To Pimp a Butterfly." "To Pimp yeah. a Butterfly" was not popular at all when it yeah, first came out. I remember that. I remember that vividly, like playing, being the one trying to play it with the homies in the whip, and them like hearing a few songs, and then like being like, "Nah, turn this shit off." Like, what is this? But yo, that's my one of my favorite. Yeah, I love albums it. That's my favorite, one of my. That is my favorite album by Kendrick for sure. Definitely. I like "Good Kid, Mad City" more, but. Tim Pimp a Butterfly is really good. But at the time, it was I guess what it was is the same shit. Like it's the same thing with like Kanye and a lot of these other people. It was so much. I don't want to say it's next because like it everything didn't become that. But it was so much like futuristic in a way that like we hadn't heard nothing like that yet. That mm-hmm. a lot of people that heard it was really like they just didn't know how to understand that at all. 
it was very I saw a lot of that like I saw a lot of people just being like this is not even nothing like what he made before like, I think what the big part of it was that he went in that real like jazz approach and then and hip hop like, fans wasn't really like into jazz like yeah. that at the time is what I'm saying like the average hip hop like fan that was fucking with Kendrick they didn't know shit about jazz like that at that time because it was like a little uh, like what's it called it was like the blog era it was mm. like the back of the blog era you know what I mean so it was after the heads that actually knew about samples and shit like that like it was in the time where motherfuckers just was lime downloading shit but then see here's the wild thing too like even though at the time it wasn't popular but now everybody now it's like <laughs> ever since cause yeah. like all the shit that was going on and he was like see I told y'all niggas exactly. like <laughs> that's what I mean it was futuristic like um everybody started to copy the sound Joey Badass All American Badass That sound Kinda came from To Pepper Butterfly With the funk And jazz influences I can see that Big Sean Came out with a song Called Living Single Where it was like More like kinda- yeah, I feel like I ain't listening to The mother like Knockoff versions of it though Like all the knockoff To Pepper Butterflies I think I waited Till the next year When they were like Alright I'm gonna do Some different shit yeah, like yeah, he he. So started I remember that Big Sean song. I remember the that that album. I remember bumping like that was the only album bro I ever bought on iTunes. What the big what wait? Pimp Butterfly. Oh, uh, like I told him, I was like, I'm trying to buy it. Like I want to buy it, like type shit. And I don't know why. Like I could I could have just I you know what I'm saying, but I was like, nah, I'm, I feel you. I mean that album cover is iconic. That was you the took one. niggas from the hood and put it in the in, also, in got front of the White House. He jigged my name too and put it in the first song. That's what got me. Wait, he requested. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I looked at the track list and I was like, nah, ain't no way. <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie, it took me like a few <laughs> listens to understand the album. Was even I will say that on that for sure. Like, same. I feel like by the second or third listen through is because me personally, like when I listen to albums to begin with in, in any regard like I listen to like m- melodically and like f- like instrumental and like how the delivery is being presented first like by the artist and then like second unless it's like a super clear it depends on like I guess it depends on the artist and depends on the type of song but I will say most songs lean towards that response for me unless it's like something that's really cut and dry like you know very stripped instrumental so it's like only vocals and you have to focus on like what's being said then it's kind of like really brought forward so it's like all right this is what they really want me to focus on but i feel like a lot of music nowadays is melodically driven so like that's what catches my ear first but on the second and third listen is when i really get to dive into like the lyrics and like reflect on it i was like and like i just remember i literally remember one time like cleaning my, like rearranging my entire room and i was listening to, to pimp a butterfly and i like i was listening to the songs and i was like oh shit like okay like I was starting to like understand it better and I, was, I just remember like as I'm like cleaning my room and doing myself like taking moments of being like oh okay like really like sitting back and reflecting on the certain moments of being like oh shit like I remember listening to the song but I didn't listen to this part of there's that song there's two that stick out on that album like that for me cause These Walls was one that took me a long long time to really fucking get like it's still to this day be confusing the fuck out of me a little bit I like but I, I got it like it took me a minute though I was just like hearing it and I was just like, bro, like, I love this song, but I do not know what the fuck is going on. Like, I knew he's talking about, like, pussy. I knew the general, like, like oh, different flips of walls. But I'm like, then there's a story going on. And then I was like, okay, what? where does the story, like, when does it end? When does it begin? For a while, it was just because it's a vibe. I'm just vibing. Yeah. And then Mortal Man. Mortal Man was Mortal one. Mortal Man is crazy. It's like, that one, like, I had to bump that many, many, many a times. But now, like. And I feel like I was understanding more shit each time. Like, it wasn't like I was ever really confused. Like, I got something from it each time. But it was one of those, like, I feel like I always get something from. Like, that was one of my favorite songs ever to type shit. Like, Isn't that the most beautiful of, like, in my opinion, that's almost, like, the best level of art. When, you like, you can revisit something and each time you revisit it, you take something more away from it. Yeah, that's what, that's how that song feels. That's how you can tell it's been, like, well-crafted. You know? I- I'm not gonna lie. Every time I listen to Mortal Man at the end when he's saying pop, pop, a teardrop just kind of comes out. I'm like, yeah, it's like, deep. oh, like, it's the fuck. deepest type of song. Dad, dad hits the tear ducts and like these walls did confuse the fuck out of me. But like, <laughs> but then like, um, it makes sense. It ties into Sing About Me. 
right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That guy killing his homeboy, and then like he Kendrick gets revenge by fucking the dude's girl. And yeah, I was like, that's wild. Kendrick is good for that, bro. That's he, wild. He's good for telling the story so fucking well that you don't really know what the fuck went on. Like, there's like, <laughs> there's like a song on a uh, fucking Thundercats album, Drunk Like That, where Kendrick's on like that feature, mm-hmm. where it's like, bro, I kept listening to that shit, and I was like, I couldn't exactly, I just know like parts of it, like where he's like a soldier, and he's talking about like, and I feel like it somehow plays into it, like, but you know, we'll bump that shit at the end, you know, but it's a, it's a good jam. But, but um, I was gonna ask: Is there any uh, topics that you want to hit before we get into life affirmations? Because we do the life affirmations at the end. But you know, anything like particularly about Sider's life or music you want to get into before we get that? You know what I'm Man, that's a good question. I feel like both times. I mean, like last time, I because when we were talking about this earlier, after when they left for a little bit, it reminded me that we'd had this conversation a little bit before. I feel like last time when we were filming the music video about talking about like new york and stuff oh yeah 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 and you had lived there no i, know, I, you, I just went there oh went yeah I remember having this. that's funny because i was telling him slightly a little bit about our you know thoughts on want to move to new york and then he brought it up but i forgot that we had this conversation you just jogged my whole memory i know how this connects he was talking about how he went there in eighth grade and how he didn't like it and i was saying how i've never been there and that's why i started the conversation i was like yo have you been to new york i was like i bet you've been in new york and then he was like oh i only had once and i was saying that you lived there for like a year and you really fucked with it but i remember remember when we were all together he actually was telling us about his experience there though i forgot about like the time when you were there and like the way we were like talking about the idea do people really dress like or like act like how they act or whatever in New York or some shit. Remember, like I think that's what we we're all talking about. Like that is what I mean. That's an, that's an interesting thing we could talk about mm-hmm. as well. But I was gonna say, because knowing how your distaste for New York now and what you were saying that you kind of think that LA is a little overrated. What do you think is like the ideal city, or like what's your ideal city? Where do you? Or would you want to live? Where would you want to live? Hmm, we did slightly talk about that too. Um. I don't know. It's just the culture of L.A., like, when it comes to, like, the arts and music. Like, people like like to act too cool for, for shit. And it's just like, man, just shut the fuck up and enjoy the, enjoy the art. Because, like, uh, just as an up-and-coming, like, rapper and poet, uh, you will go up on stage And this is not the case every time But a lot of times when you go up on stage You tell people to put their hands up And get hype, start a mosh pit or some shit And they just stand there and look at you And yeah. it's just like I've heard that a lot about LA crowds That that's like at least a lot of performers experience Yeah and like That's just annoying and like people like to be shallow People like to humble brag People like to like Act like folks are are inferior to them because they did x y and z but then they're still performing at the same dingy ass fucking club and shit like that you know what i'm saying like everybody's at the same playing field and um yeah that's that's just some of the shit that i don't like about la and um just in regards to like arts and music also it's a little congested like people like to think la is so huge you could easily run into someone that you know or someone that knows someone that you know. Because there's only a couple of places that everybody wants to go on a given day. What what places? There's just, no, just like they just switch. It's just hype. Like, like there's just like a couple areas and things that like where you just happen to like see people at. I, f- I feel like it's somewhat group thing. If you get what I'm saying, like, so like Melrose or some shit. Like, there's dope shit there, but like, LA could be big as fuck. But everybody on the same day could want to go to the dopest place on the same day. And you just see the people you didn't even know you could see. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, L.A. is like that. That's where L.A. feels small to me. At Like, you would look at some shit on Instagram and be like, oh, shit, this looks lit. And everybody in the world thought the same thing, and they're all right there. <laughs> <with you. laughs> well, see, like, here's the other thing, too. Like, I don't like New York because, like, okay, my perspective may change as an adult. Granted, like, I was in the eighth grade. I was like... 12 years old um like some motherfuckers is just rude like i went to foot action to get some jordans and some shit like i got got some money from my folks and then i walked in there the the person at the desk is like 
hey, I could tell that you're not from here. Like, where, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from L.A. And then she was like, damn, I was just asking. What the hell is it? I was like, I just said I'm from L.A. What the fuck? Like, what was the issue? <laughs> like, and like, man, I just felt like probably I just need to collect seven golden Timbs and summon Jaw Rule to have my back and shit. Like, because New York niggas can be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and that is one something that I'm a little bit worried about in going there because, like, Mauricio has seen me, bro. Like, I'm not like like I I don't really like to be rushed. Like, I'm I'm wearing the red here, bro. Like, I don't like, I want to take my time. Like, if only look at this guy. Like, I feel like out there they're on there like. Like chill out, I'm, like it's gonna be a lot of chill out swim for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, son, hey, B, you know, hey, what like, you I'm doing? Like, Yo, chill out, bro. <laughs> like, I'm like take, make five, like <laughs> just recollect, like. <laughs> oh shit! I'm going to be like, nah, I gotta go now. I gotta go now. Like I'm like, but I always wanted to go to Seattle though. Yeah, see, that seems like a nice, decent in between speed for me. I want to go to London. I want to go to like. You know what I'm saying? If I'm thinking of U.S. places, I feel like that's been the harder thing for me. Like, I don't think of somewhere else in the U.S. that's doper than Cali. Like, eh. It's pretty funny. You know what I mean? Like, it gets it gets tough. But it's for what you want. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's that's also the flip of it, too. It's for what you want. You know what I mean? What do you what do you see? Because it is about 220, so we'll transition soon. But I think the, to flip a uh, tangent off of your question, what do you want? Like, what do you want when you old, when you retire? Like, do you want to live in, like, outside in the landscapes? Do you want to be living in the city? When you say so, do you want to live? What is your, your, you know, you want a house with all of your family in a ranch somewhere? Do you want, you know, them at a separate pad, just a dope pad, and you at an apartment on your own? How do you want to live? I was talking to someone about this the other, the other night uh, about, like, Things that we want out of life and my main thing like right now is to take my folks out of the neighborhood and show them the world like my dad he's from alabama um migrated to california because there was some shit going on with the ku klux klan chasing like the family out and hey, didn't feel from safe arkansas and like over there too yeah so like um my mom's never well like i think she never been out of South Central or out of LA. Um, no, no, no. I take that back. She has been out of like South Central or LA, but it was when like she was like older, and um, I just want her to see like more places of the world. I want to like take my dad to like other places of the world, and my sister too. Like my parents always told me like different stories about people being on the same block at the same time like doing nothing and like all they know is the block they're institutionalized to that and that's all they know and like is that their fault no that's that's not their fault that's all they know like for example like last september it was my first time being in beverly hills because i had to perform in beverly hills I oh, never wow. been to Beverly Hills. Actually, you talk about Melrose, like, how long ago was this? A few weeks ago, I was on Melrose for the very first time in my life. For real? You never, like, made a move on there? No. I feel you, though. That is one of those thoughts, like, even when I first started going more often, that was maybe, like, the third time I had been type shit. Like, you know what I mean? Because it's just, like, I get what you mean. It's just some shit you don't really, like decide to go to unless you really have a reason to go to because it's like you know what I mean I don't know I feel like that it's some shit that's just kind of there as a like monument but like I feel like that's a great description how you were saying with like LA as a whole like even though it's all spread out like there's things to do everywhere but at a certain point there's only certain things are going on for whatever it is that you want to do right so if you're involved in certain things like everything is just kind of centralized there so like once you that's get into I mean. like the Melrose like the fashion or like that music or music, something like, like that. that everything just ends up being there in a certain sense or Facts, like in certain bro. like other I done been there like, bro and seen some of from you know? like Instagram or some shit that I was talking to about music one day just walking by and then bro but then that's when you realize people weird you be like what's good maybe I can all sus like <laughs> I'm like not like a ghost and some shit I'm like what like you don't remember me like <laughs> Yeah, pe people. That's what I mean by like LA is small like that. Like you just see like the internet in front of your face. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like Instagram is like in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, man. So yeah, that. But to answer the question, like that, that's what I want. 
uh i want and and i also want to be in like a fly ass crib on the beach it don't even have to be big yeah, it could just so but you're, like locationally wise the beach is your, your shit yeah on the beach we're like two three story building water have a view of the water room full of like vinyl just play get oldies ass, get a big ass pad in monterey and just be the the mayor Man, we ain't gonna get into that. <laughs> uh, sh- hey, hey, shout out, shout out to A three one, shout out A three one, A three one lifestyle crew, uh, Mr. A three one, Daniel, uh, Julie, Elena, uh, Warren, the, the, yeah, that whole crew. Shout out to them. Um, but yeah, my monitor is now on my list of places to. Oh well, yeah, nah, not like that. Yeah, I mean like, <laughs> if, I mean, I mean like if you ran it, you know, in a perfect world. If I ran it in a perfect world. Yeah, I, I I love Monterey. I love I love the scenery. I love like the beaches. Like Pebble Beach is fucking amazing. Um, Tell me, what if that was your town? Oh yeah, that that it would, would go up. I think it would go up. Oh yeah, it'll be litty like a motherfucker. It's gonna be all black. You know what I'm saying? We gonna change the the cultural center. If if I ever get to take over a white cultural center, it'll be the Ciders Cultural Center for Black Youth. That I already yeah. had that in my head, like, uh, so yeah, they be- Carmel better not fuck around and let me in that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 that, that ass, but shit. So I think now is about the time we get into the life affirmation segment. It's been a bit of a deep pod already, but you know, this one is a bit of a focused little deep segment that we do before we get into the music. We talk about one thing that we look at differently in the past two weeks or month or year or however long you want to put it mm-hmm. but it's mainly you know something that i used to look at this way and now I look at this one we just go around and share it so i mean for this week i probably need a little bit of time to think usually i started off <laughs> but i think i could still do it i'm just kind of you got it i feel like you might have had one though, so you look like you had it in you i had one that i'm like still contemplating with and i'm there's another one though that I feel like is more relevant to like especially this past week um in like a couple weeks I feel like I've been like trying to control my pa- I don't know it's just a weird it's it even sounds weird saying it out loud but trying to control my passion in a sense to certain things like recognizing that like not everyone and every like not everyone and everything like runs and sees the same thing and sees the world and interprets it the same way I do and like certain things just aren't worth fighting for in certain instances and so it's just kind of like battling of like of that like trying to I guess you could call it in a certain sense it's like control I want I didn't want to say control my temper because I don't feel like it's a temper I feel like it only gets uh, I just become overly enthusiastic about whatever it is that I'm involved in. And when I get put into certain situations that are like for putting myself and asking myself to be enthusiastic about a certain subject, it's about learning how to not take it to 10 all the time, you know, being able to dial it back to six, dial it back to, you know, three or whatever, whatever it may have to be for the situation. But, you know, trying to, take a calmer heads approach because I, I always try to st- I feel like I've always tried to stay calm throughout my life and try to keep quiet and kind of like a reserved approach to certain things but in doing so I've felt stifled in certain situations and I felt like I haven't been able to get point across and I felt like I haven't been able to express myself in certain capabilities so then I felt like I had to overcorrect and sometimes be overly vocal about any and everything and be like okay well now this is how I feel about this and this and that and now it's just trying to find that balance of being able to not having to be overly vocal about things that I don't feel I should be as passionate about sometimes or maybe I don't know I don't know it's hard I see what you're saying just different approaches to getting the job done kind of is what you're saying like you know just just looking at different possible approaches to it and shit I feel like one thing I was kind of thinking of over the past couple of weeks at least has definitely been uh, being more frugal with myself for sure I think I had to definitely reflect on a lot on that recently on like money wise 
and like really kind of just sit with myself and like kind of realize like just the steps that I had I have to like take uh, like financial literacy wise and like kind of like I don't know like being more frugal and shit to get to the goals that I want to like receive I feel like that's something that in a moment I kind of was like at a point in time I was very like going headstrong with like the idea of like nah like I'm gonna make this money back like I'm working like things could you know what I mean like but I also have now kind of somewhat seen how it could be de- debilitating to make try to make everything and do everything and, and you know like it's a little bit of like more sacrifice needed on frugalness for me at least to get to the goals I need because I feel like I've handled a little bit of other things in my life but like there's some other like I guess loose ends and shit I could have definitely for sure I feel like or all loose ends in life I could definitely tighten up with a little bit more of like balance when it comes to like financial literacy and like being frugal like saving money and moving shit it kind of like adds balance to the other parts in life I'm noticing Mm. That like I was kind of <laughs> neglecting, but also shit to give and deeper than that, I kind of also been understanding that that's a part of life and like the same shit you were talking about, like education and what you're exposed to and shit like that. Because in our environment, like as far as like my parents and shit like that, like my that's some shit I get into it with, and I realize that it's something I have to kind of take up my own journey with because like there's influence on some end where like I do have people that kind of have always been on that tip. But then there's other people that haven't that I've seen, too, within my life. And it's kind of like, I don't know, I like I maybe in some sense, you know, I'm a hard headed person. I like to learn shit my own way. But then when you learn shit your own way, sometimes you kind of go back and understand, like, some of the shit people were saying. You just see some of the shit you miss, you know what I mean, on your own. And you're like, OK, like this would come in handy here. Like if I were to pick that up, one of those things that you didn't pick up. Mm-hmm. So that's just something for me at least i was realizing more like money wise i've always been the kind of person on like managing it and saving it that i was just was like i don't know I, I, maybe i'm too much of an aquarius art ass head I was, <laughs> I was always thinking that that's what's gonna get me there without you know putting too much into that but i'm like damn you you gotta put uh you gotta put the same amount of work into it because of how much it has to do with what you do yeah and wait you're an aquarius yeah where, what sign are you? Capricorn. Whoa. Whoa. Wait. Happy belated birthday. Thank you. Coming up. Happy soon birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 17th, right after the Valentine's Day. All that. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. When's your I'm, birthday? I'm a Libra. September 29th, 93. Cool. Yeah. Well, like, I'm on, like, that cuss. I was like, going to say, at least you're not a, a Virgo. Man, what what okay what is wrong with Virgos? <laughs> Hold on, we before we continue. I'm, um, one of my though. best friends is a Virgo. She means the world to me. She's great. She's born September seventh. What's wrong with Virgos? I don't know. <laughs> What's your people Virgos? Is it, you, did you get hurt? Nah, I think you should, got another you one just tell me, bro. You know, you have you have, you have a friend that's a Virgo. So you said what? You said you have a homie that's a Virgo. So you should tell me. You know what's up with them. I mean, hey, if you watching this, homie, like, I could hook you up with the homie right here. Nah, I just mean, like, you know what's up with them. Like, I would say, <laughs> I would say Virgos, in my opinion, from other people I've met, I've met yeah, multiple yeah, yeah. people that are Virgos, right? Mm-hmm. The one thing that I've came to, you know, I asked them and I'd be like, hmm, I feel like they're they're outrageously organized. Not all of them, no. Yeah, and some of no. them will be like, nah, like I ain't organized. Da, da, da. But it's a lot of them that are like very like you're in that regard. Like that's the tip I think is different than some of the other air signs or other signs about them. I think that they lean a little more cappy. You know? <laughs> they lean a little more like cappy. The, the, you know just what I mean? Turn. Like, but they not all the way like that. Cause yeah. that's what I'm saying. They they feel the Libras. They cool with other people that are like in vibes. Mm-hmm. But they just got their head on their shoulders a little bit too much. That's my Ooh. opinion. How can you have your head on your shoulders a right? little bit too much? And how is that a thing? That's my thing. I'm telling you, they're but not crazy. They're not, they not crazy <laughs> enough like the other signs. Like, and that's fucking annoying. It's oh, like, oh, that's cap. All, major, majority of the fucking like Virgos like that Gemini, I know are fucking wild. They're not like a Cancer. Like they like like it's like oh shit. Like you got your you got your shit good like together. But, hey, oh, <laughs> they hey. like cool. 
Hey, I might, <laughs> I might just be hurt. We over here like our moons all fucked up. <laughs> Hey, my moon is pretty wild. See what I'm saying? Like, moon- I gotta cancel. <laughs> we over here all up and down. They like balanced. My moon is a, <laughs> my moon's a Pisces. So, See? Pisces so, right next to Aquarius. So I'm gonna I'm on the picks. <laughs> I'm on the cusp of that. I'm right at the edge. Uh, for oh yeah, yeah, you are. But like, yo, nah, the the Virgos are, I know they're, they're not bad. Wild. But no. I'm just saying that's the 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 stereotypical Virgo. What people don't like about them. That's the, just give me what people don't like about them. That's that's wild as shit. I I, I, I just <laughs> have to say <laughs> like. <laughs> But, Scorpios, but, but, but cap, them niggas but is scary. He will never understand it though, cause a, bro, this fool is a cap through and through. A Capricorn type of person <laughs> would never understand that type of shit. You know why? Because Capricorns also have their head on very sturdy, so they're like, why would that be a bad thing at all? <laughs> but, but wait, wait, wait. What did no, you say, bro? Bad thing, like, what did you say? I, I said uh, Scorpios are like scary. They're not scary. Come on, nigga, over there. No, no. <laughs> Wait, nigga, is you a Scorpio? Yeah. Hey, you scary, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but they only scary because Scorpios are in October, so that's why. You got it. That's, I didn't, that's the only he reason He said why. that. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just I, saying. I get how it can you, be scary because it's like spooky time. Like, no, you, know. you cross a Scorpio, that's your head. Well, it's, it's Halloween, bro. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Scorpios and Gemini's. I, I Gemini's. I, I got fucked over by Gemini, so that's why I'm like, oh, that, so those. That's the sign you don't like. That that that. that. Why well, now? You tell but, me. I mean, what's but, up but, with them but, though? What's up with Gemini's? Why are they but, bad? But no, it's not. I, I, I will know, acknowledge. I know some cool Gemini's. I but, know some cool <laughs> Gemini's. <laughs> but I'll acknowledge it's not all Gemini's. Like one of my really <laughs> close friends. Uh, her name is a. Ge- I mean, I said her name. She's a Gemini. Shout oh, out, my kid. And an artist. Like all musicians, like all the legendary ones ever, are Gemini's. I mean, shit. I mean, we can still work. Like, like. I mean, I again, my homegirl, Michael. Like, she's on my project. Like, she's a Gemini. We always get into shit. Like, we always see each other. Gemini's. Hell <laughs> of artists, Gemini's. Real question to both of you guys. Yeah. Do you guys ever like before you collaborate, like work with someone? Be like, wait, wait, wait. Like, what's your sign? Nah, oh, nah, nah, nah. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Nah. Okay, okay. I don't do that shit. Um, like, I, that wouldn't matter at all. But I would say, like, it will, it could come up, and then I could have a conversation about it. Because <laughs> he put the judge the fuck out of it. That's why. Yeah, like, I'm not going to bring it up, but if it, it could come If you pull that card out mid-session, I might have to walk out, is what you're saying. Nah, nah. I would never walk out on it. <laughs> this but, nigga walking out. But I would say, like, the shit we saying right now, I'll say it right to their face. Like, if they're whatever they are, like, I'll be like, oh, I think this is that, that sometimes. Oh, but yeah. I, but I also would tell them that it's not 100%. I would tell them it's not 1,000%. You feel me? Leo's the scariest fuck, too. Same. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody agrees late. with me. At least you relate on that regard. We late, about, nigga. I said no relate on that. Oh, regard. relate. Oh, like nigga, we talked I'm about. Late. We talked about that a little bit on the finale pod where we were just talking about the whole Kendrick situation. Leos are a bit scary. Le- Leos <laughs> are scary. Le- <laughs> Leo Scorpios are scary. Gemini's could be scary because when they flip, they will flip. Yeah, man. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back to the affirmations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had to because you you brought us signs. <laughs> <hear it>, <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, for me, be more open. Uh, be more vulnerable, because uh, um, I was going through a lot of shit at the end of last year, uh, where like family members were dying, um. And, like, my dad has, like, sickle cell. And, like, he had to go to the hospital a few times, like, during one week. And uh, during that time, I had difficulty difficulty opening up to new folks that was, like, in my circle. And, like, I blatantly told them, like, like, yo, I don't trust you. Like, I just straight up said it. And, like, every time I think about it, I, like, cringe a little because it's, like, Man, like, I know I was coming from a wounded place, but like, it it, it kind of just felt it just didn't feel right. Like now, like being in the position I'm at right now, where like I'm viewing life um, in a in a more happy sense, uh, lack of a better term. 
so uh yeah just being open and honest uh about how i'm feeling instead of just blatantly saying some shit that i don't really mean and um and like understanding um the language of it and like how that could affect people uh also at the same time protecting myself at all costs um because while i was even going through that i was even thinking about okay um maybe there are people that i need to cut out of my life and since then i have cut out my life um and you know just trusting myself and trusting god first and foremost so uh just being open to the possibilities of where things could be could head and not to rush things to just always go with the flow but always steady working and steady aligning self to spirit so nice i want to help i see some motherfucking shit <laughs> well shit bro so, that was a that was a great episode thank you for coming that thank you for having me this was a great conversation yo this right, was bro. super dope i appreciate oh, yeah. that shit, yeah man. it's yeah. a pleasure fucking having you come out here and uh talk to us bro and and work with us in general shit like that song was a great uh it was a great like chance for me to like collaborate with somebody that i was were meeting out there and that was something for me that was really important in going to school because i like i said i didn't know how i was going to turn it into music so it was really like it was a kind of like a way for me to see like all right like going forward it's just gonna be more of this you know what i mean and like spreading out and expanding and like kind of showing people all these different perspectives in the world so thank you for coming through and like being a part of that shit man man thank you thank you appreciate it thank you. and anything you want to tell the you. folks before we get on out of here but you, you know shit coming out, out. um things you got already out anything man i don't know where to find you on ig all that on ig you can find me at uh, at, at the <laughs> the T H E Chris C H R I S Ciders S I D E R S all that's one word on Instagram. Majority of the uh, info and shit is gonna be on there. You can add me on Facebook if you want. Um, I don't really fuck with Twitter like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, us too. Uh, my new single. Well, this is gonna like come out out uh, like after the single drops. Um, lately. Out now, Spotify, all major DSPs. Shout out Nana Rosaria. Shout out uh, Shelby. Shout out Nemesis. Uh, shout out God and shout out to my motherfucking self. So, um, yeah, yeah. February 11th, lately, lately. Go get that shit. Go stream that shit. Run it up, run it up, run it up. Mind Tree Radio. God damn, God damn, sent from the heavens, God bless the damn Running so quick and sick beneath the sand With up my bones to blossom your cranium Whoa, whoa, whoa Romanticize a trauma bond Fuck up thoughts like this love won't get far Being fat, black and ugly, you're my shining scars To glare in your eye, darling No self-confidence to bring the peace and to shoot the shot Give me the run around like dodging cops All beat to the fears that this heartbreak bring You sex to rediscover what's buried in the sea You stay in my mind so often lately Can't shake the fact how you did me shady Can't shake the fact how you did me shady Damn Swing your swords, add up my pinnacle, cynical to the love courts on my leaper scale. What's brewed in heaven became my hell. Tell me who I could talk to about my dreams. Who could soothe my bruises from this ecstasy? Pain comes in many forms, I'm addicted to. As long as you blossom in my mind lately, I yearn to say that I love you. Not having you part of the plan
Looking for the answers All around me Even when I'm high I see you clearly And I can't explain how I feel You are more than real These intrusive thoughts I started with words I lost Found on the tips of fingers, tongues Turning stomachs to rumble butterflies That lie on the grapevine drunk not enough rap to clear the cluster But who the midsummer so Paul Saunders are dawn A poltergeist riven in dust Sounded too fast and burned the mustard language our cups Engulfed corpses then pluck flowers bashfully Smelling them in the morning rush Prove oneself not as fragile as rose-colored skies That crack glass ceilings I continue to swipe crystals off the floor The court my melancholy joy Avoiding conflict unprecedented Revolving eras quickly upended What it costs, the price of love is unknown. What it means, I ain't trying to look dumb, yo. But I mean, maybe you something I'm sprung on. Can I breathe? You look like a dragon, don't last long. Missing people that treat you like shit. Accept the love we think we deserve, but never forget. Flush. Throw it around what it seems like a pipe dream. Force meetings on stupid things like, oh my god, it's a fucking well. I've been heartbreaking so many times to know this fairy tale. Give a big fuck you, I'ma flip the script, rewrite to insult your intelligence. Become a member of my life, sell you my love for high price. One night to satisfy all your insecurities, man. Good sex, have you chant all my alias names instead. Uh, string niggas along like orchestra pieces. I don't stick around and resort to cheating. Stop Alicia from falling on E to grab the keys for the partner of my dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Woke up on a Friday, steamed the L and parlay with my niggas trying to make a plan and get the stats like always. They wouldn't believe the visions I've been having in my room. They probably say this dude's consumed with tomb, doom's prevalent. I woke up out of cold sweat, dreaming like my hell's been heaven sent. Posters staring at the wall, bugs crawl up on the ceiling. I don't know what your car, but I need some healing. Pain resolve it all in the mirror. I'm concealing fears, hating doubt, rolling up my inhibitions, letting loose for the night. But I still hear something missing. Twelve o'clock rolls around and I can't find my missus. I stroll the whole town in search of love. I need more of this shit. More of a sense of humor, but I'm farther with the discus. Fire with the verses, baby, shift for some of this shit. Clock keep ticking, shit is better with some distance. Mind keep turning, I've been all up on the business. Well, I get the car to this 4 I am. I've been locked in the moment like a ghost in the shell. She know who I am and she know I don't mean well. My subconscious paranoid got my brain on the fritz. So when she call, I don't know if I'm gonna answer shit. <laughs> Complicated. Mind Tree Radio.